Hello and welcome to the Critical Culus. In today's video, we are back in Empire of Sin for another Boss Spotlight episode. Today's episode is all about Dion O'Bannon. Now, he's an interesting boss. I know a few people that actually quite like this boss, so I figured I would break him down the way I normally do on this channel. So if you are interested in Empire of Sin and want to see more content just like this, look no further. This channel has you covered with almost 200 videos. If you can't find the answer to your question here, I'd be extremely surprised, but if you can't, Comment your thoughts down below or your questions down below and I'll do my very best to answer it. Failing that, we do also have an active and growing Discord. Uh, the link for that will be down in the description. So if Empire Sin is what you're looking for, don't forget to hit that like button and of course subscribe to the channel. Now enough of all of that, let's get on to the stats and start breaking down this character. First of all, we have the Empire bonuses. Now, first up, we have the Flower Shop. Now, this is the one of the brand new perks brought in for the Precinct update. And this is the Flower Shop. All rackets except breweries contribute 50% less police activity in this precinct. This is actually brilliant. Um, now, breweries, you're going to have a lot of breweries, so they are exempt, but you're going to have a lot of speakeasies, going to have a lot of loan sharks. If you have one of these um, bonuses activated, well, you're going to have a lot less police activity, meaning they're not going to be raiding you as much, meaning you're not going to have as many businesses shut down all the time. Um, I quite like this one. I think that it's a little bit going under the radar. I think it's very powerful and I definitely like it. The next one we have industry standard breweries deflect upgrade is minus 20%. Meh. Yeah, we're going to have breweries. Yeah, you're going to upgrade it. Do you need this? No. Next up, we have something I said. Speakeasy's word of mouth upgrade cost is again minus 20%. Yeah, it's a big deal, I guess, minus 20%. Upgrading your word of mouth on a speakeasy again is good. So, yeah, that one's okay. Next up, we have Turncoat. Uh, Turncoat. Turncoat. Uh, truth, truth's uh, duration is minus 50%. I quite like this. However, I've never really had to go into a truce. Um, this game is relatively easy, so you don't really need to go into a truce. Therefore you looking to break that truce isn't really going to happen um and then you have business arrangement difficulty plus 20 percent that's not good because as far as i read that it means it's going to be harder to get business arrangements um so really the only really good um empire bonus that we have here is the flower shop but that flower shop bonus is so good it kind of makes up for the other three not being all that Next up, we have the stats. And first of all, we want to be looking at the attack stat. Of course, melee has been taken out now. So we have got the marksmanship stat. At 65, this honestly is not that good. Um, especially considering this is really a shotgun build character. And therefore, we kind of need that marksmanship to be up a little bit more. Luckily, within your game, this stat will improve. However, 65 does mean you could be missing uh, shots if you're not already running something like the golden uh, submachine gun, unfortunately. And the one stat here that I absolutely hate, and I do mean it made the playthrough with Dion so much harder, is that minus 5% um, defense. Now, it doesn't seem like a lot, does it? Minus 5%, just 5%. But when you look at all the other bosses, most of them already have 5, right? Most of them are set at 5. Some of them even have more. Some of the gangsters have a considerably better defense. Um, so when you get minus 5 on Dion and you're on boss difficulty, for instance, it can make the playthrough seem incredibly difficult at the beginning of the game. Because after all, when it comes to Empire Sin, it's the start of your game that's really the only issue anyway. Because as we all know, these bosses become super powered, um, you know, with ridiculous stats. And you can really pump up that health. But at the beginning of the game, 
when you got no other gangsters, when you're only got when you're only running 150 health, and when you can be taken out in almost two hits, maybe three hits without you know body armor. This minus three, or sorry, minus five defense is terrible and it can really hamper you. So you've got to keep that in mind when you're playing this game. Also, when you're playing this, this boss, when we move on to initiative, which means your order of battle, the higher the number, the higher up the line you are when it comes to being first in the order of battle, 61 isn't going to cut it. It's very low for a boss. And you really, really do want to be getting a trinket to kind of improve that initiative because, like I said, 61 it just doesn't cut it. Then we move on to movement. Again, we're at six, so it's one of the lowest stats you can get on a boss. And the next three stats are all about your dialogue choices. Um, they are all about your in-game events that come up and the different options you're able to actually complete. So leadership is 55, terrible, but the next two stats are 90 in persuasion, 100 in intimidation, meaning you're pretty much guaranteed to successfully pull off any events that pop up in the game um, and any dialogue choices that you want to. Great stats when it comes to completing those missions. Moving on to the traits, unfortunately Dion doesn't have too much. He does have thick skin, which means he has a 15% chance to resist those crits, which kind of can save him sometimes considering the minus 5 on defense bonus. But unfortunately, that's about all he really has. He does also have immovable, which is a 10% chance to resist being knocked back, but that doesn't really turn up too much in battle. Moving on to the skill tree and how I would build him up. Now, we'll talk about Blasphemy a little bit later. In tier 2, we have the very obvious perk of going for Lifeline. You could go for Saviour, but honestly, Lifeline's just better. Any character within 4 meters of you will bleed out instead of dying when their HP reaches 0. This really isn't going to be one that you're going to be wanting to play the Lone Wolf with. So, you're going to be wanting to pick that up. In tier 3, we have a few different options. Bullet Shield is very good. Break Shot is very useful, but I always say if your boss is a healer, go down the healing path. And again, with Dion, I really think that you should as well. Heal is really good. You will store 60 um, HP when you use it. In tier 4, well, we actually have a decent perk for a change. Strike a move. Killing a target grants you a three bonus move, meaning you can move on the battlefield. Considering we only have six movement speed, this could come in quite handy. And in tier five, of course, we have to have kill chain. It's the only perk you should ever really look at, unfortunately. Fire a shot at a target. If the target is killed, uh, your turn doesn't end and you get one AP back. Honestly, I believe every boss in the game actually has this. Um, and if you ever have a playthrough long enough to actually get it, definitely get it. Completely change your game and you can take everyone out on your own. And when it comes to combat, honestly, it is down to you and how you like to play the game. But I always like to make a recommendation. Personally, I think you should go shotguns um, with this character. His main ability uses a shotgun. Kills with your main ability do stack on shotguns, so meaning you are more likely to be able to get those kills with a shotgun if you help him out actually giving him a shotgun as well. And there are some really, really good perks you can get here. Um, it does take a lot of kills. It is going to be a grind. But if you put in the effort, use shotguns throughout the game, you're going to feel very, very overpowered. Also, Dion's unique weapon is also a shotgun guy so it works really well with Dion I believe it's called Little How uh, which you can get for completing uh, Dion's missions it's a very good shotgun and if you start stacking all those abilities uh, you can absolutely devastate um, on the battlefield now when it comes to your boss ability like all the other bosses this takes three kills in order to have it fully charged blasphemy is a brilliant brilliant ability basically you fire an explosive slug 
um, at a target and it then explodes knocking back that target or any targets within range and it also destroys armor it can be very powerful especially in crowds especially when using it on roaming death squads it also has bullet penetration so if you have a line of enemies your slug that you fire will go through all of the enemies until it reaches its target then afterwards exploding you can actually use this really well and take out many enemies i found at the beginning of the game it can be a bit difficult to actually you know get the full effect from this ability but it's actually one of the stronger abilities in the game so personally i quite like this now, unfortunately, Dion isn't one of the strongest bosses in the game. He does have a few too many flaws for my liking, but if you stick with him, if you get to the mid to end game, he can become very powerful if you get his unique weapon, if you stick with the shotguns. And like I said, his ability is pretty good. And of course, all bosses do become overpowered anyway. But that is my thoughts on Dion O'Bannon. I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. Hopefully you've learned something or just found it entertaining. If you have, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And if I haven't covered your favorite boss so far, pop it down in the comments who you want me to cover in the next episode of the Boss Spotlight series. Uh, if you're the first one to comment or the first one to comment, I will do your boss next in next week's episode. But until next time, guys, I've been a monk, we've been a Christy Curious, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, happy gaming.